Right now we have our, our, our final comedian. Recently had a, a really successful series of sold out shows that I hope to be talking about afterwards. Um, but everybody, why don't we just give it up for Rick Bryan? Come on. One more time for your host, Brandon. Come on, let him hear it. What's up, everybody? Orale! Happy Cinco de Mayo! Cuatro de Mayo, whatever. Right? We don't care, huh? We're celebrating all week long. That's how we do it. And we're talking, well, Joe was talking about it earlier, about the battle. You know what happened with the Cinco de Mayo? Do you know why we celebrate it? Nobody knows, huh? But everybody likes to drink. Huh? We're a bunch of alcoholics. That's why we celebrate it. Actually, the story went, like, 1871, President Benito Juarez borrowed money from France. The following year, France was like, wee oui, wee, oui, we would like our money. Mexico was like, what money, Holmes? <laughs> I know what money you're talking about. That sounds like my relative. <laughs> so the story goes, 6,000 Frenchmen came to take over those 2,000 Mexicans, get their money back. Those Mexicans did not pay. The French got their butts kicked. The Mexicans did not pay back that money. That is why today we celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Arale! And how do we celebrate it? By getting all loaded and cruising really slow up and down Federal Boulevard, baby. <laughs> we don't got permits for our floats, but our cars cost more than those floats are made. We make our own parade out there, right? How do we get away with that annually? It's like it's okay to drink and drive as long as you keep it under five. <laughs> I burnt myself on the way over here, man. I went to go light a blunt, you know, to relax before the show, and I couldn't find a lighter. My business partner stole my lighter. All of a sudden, I see one of those ancient lighters rolling around on the ground. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that plug into where you charge your phones? Yeah, that was made for cigarette lighters, if you didn't know that. Uh-huh. Don't be dumb, all right? It wasn't made for, like, a big, you can't recharge it or nothing like that. You can't just put it in there and get a reboot. It was a funky old device. It was like a cylinder. And then what you did was you pushed it in. And it was holding it. Sometimes it would hold it. And then when it popped out, it was red like a little stove top burner right there in your car for you, for your kid. <laughs> it was a dangerous item. <laughs> Sometimes it didn't hold in though, right? Remember? You had to do like your only cal your calculations, like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. It's feeling warm. And then you pop it out. Well, this one wasn't glowing red. So what I do? I touched it. I was like, ah, get it off, get it off, get it off. Oh, it burnt me so bad, man. I have burnt myself. Didn't even have a joke for it. Just thought I'd tell you about it on the way over here. I now know why those things aren't around no more. They are dangerous. I couldn't even light my blunt either. All I did was short out my fuse in my car. <laughs> Gonna have to replace it on the way home. I don't got one of the newer cars, if you were wondering. <laughs> my baby is 13 years old, and she started buying me hats for Father's Day. She started off with the fedoras. She's like, Daddy, you're on TV. You should look good. I'm like, all right, I ain't Bruno Mars, but let me see what I can do. And then I upgraded to the Cholo hats. What a lay for Cinco de Mayo. This is authentic. The same guy who made them for American Me and Blood In, Blood Out. I ordered it from California. What a lay. I don't know how I quite feel about them. It feels like a safari hat or something. And there's like a sun hat, you know. The more I try to act like a vato, the more I look like my grandpa. <laughs> Just becoming a viejo, that's all. <laughs> That's happening. We're in dickies and sun hats. I always wondered how they could see, you know, when they walk around like this. What's up? You can see perfectly, man. It's like a net I'm looking through. That's all. This must, what, must be what it's like for uh, brides when they get married, right? Looking through the veil. You can't quite see what's going on, but you're taking the plunge anyways. <laughs> Ladies, we appreciate that. <laughs> I matched it with the white people's clothes. What are they? I'm trying. I couldn't do the pants, though. I still have to have a loop for my hammer, okay? I am Mexican by day. I know why you white people have been wearing these coats, man. They got all kinds of pockets in them. I am carrying everything on me right now. I got my phone. I got my wallet. I got my weed. I got my gun. You can't tell, huh? <laughs> Calm down, people. It's, it's a knife. I'm Mexican. Come on, keep up, all right? <laughs> I got three kids. Thank God I could have me a whole litter by now. Come on, you know as Mexicans, we're like gremlins. You just add water, we start popping out. That's not true, it's tequila. <laughs> we like to party before I <laughs> I'm, I'm not, no jokes, man. My grandma had 16 kids. 
Uh-huh. See? Ha-ha. Yeah. <laughs> I know she fed a cup of my uncles after midnight, too, because they are retarded. <laughs> and my auntie, she just kept feeding them. And feeding them. And feeding them and feeding them and feeding them. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's going on around here, man? Grandma and grandpa were like five foot three, 130 pounds. All 80 of you are five foot three, 330 pounds. Oh, we got thyroid problems. Like, <laughs> not all y'all got thyroid problems, all right? I love her, Grandma. God bless her. She's in the kitchen, wheels cut off, your legs cut off due to diabetes. But what is she doing? She's throwing lard into a big old vat. Come here, mijo, eat, eat. I'm like, oh, no, I got an alcohol problem. I'm blowing out this way. I'm not trying to explode out this way. No Mexicans here with us? They're all still working, huh? <laughs> I have three kids. Any parents with us tonight? Yeah, I got to get out the house, don't we? Yeah. You got to love them, but, oh, I hate them. I'm sorry. You know, if they're out there watching right now, I love you, but uh, you... <laughs> I understand why Homer kept grabbing Bart's neck after all of these years, man. I'm not talking about the little babies, all right? Not the cute, snuggly ones. Even after they poop themselves, they still smell like heaven. Okay, not those ones. Although, if you have those ones, go ahead and drop them. From, oh, don't tense up on me now, okay? Stick with me. I'm in the future, all right? My kids are 17, 18 years old, okay? The babies, they call them bouncing babies for a reason, all right? They won't remember it, but you will. So when your son's standing this tall, 18 years old, just rah, 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 talking all that stuff to you, you just look at him and be like, ha, 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 ha. I remember you just bounced. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, don't even worry about it, player. That's why you had a little hard time graduating high school, but don't even worry about it, right? You did good. <laughs> no jokes, okay? Smack the kids from time to time. Mine graduated a year early with honors. Very proud father right here. Good job, Nico. I'm proud of you, buddy, out there in college right now. Now he's got a pill addiction or something or whatever they pick up in college, but hey, it's out of my hands, right? <laughs> They're spoiled, man. They, don't, they think they got everything. They have everything, but they think they have nothing. I took my son's computer, his smartphone, and the smart TV, and he was miserable. Just, oh, life sucks. I can't do nothing. I said, leave. Go do something. Please, get out of my house. He's like, I don't got no money. I was like, welcome to the real world, buddy. All right? Then I stopped and started thinking about it. What did I actually do to him? I took him back to a normal day of my childhood is all I've done. Well, I didn't have a cell phone at his age. We had pagers. You remember those? Mm -hmm. Everybody remembers them, but we weren't doctors, were we? No, but we had the pagers. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, just a homie right there. Let me call him back. You have to go to the wall to grab the phone. You know, it's attached to the wall. So my mom wouldn't ground me from the pager. She just ground me from the telephone. That was torture. I could see everybody was calling me, but I couldn't do nothing about it. I was like, just take the pager, please. Smart TV, what is that? I had a little 13-inch black and white television back in the day. I remember seeing Tommy Davidson at the Denver Improv. Y'all remember Tommy Davidson, Living Color? Yeah, he's like, oh, what's up, man? I was like, dude, I remember watching you on my little black and white 13-inch television with the blankets over my head so my mom wouldn't see the light. He's like, dang, we weren't on in the 70s. I was like, yeah, we was broke in the 90s, Doug. <laughs> and he liked that. I'm like, that one's going in the books. <laughs> Kid spoiled, man. All, took, all I did was put a regular day in my childhood, and that is just the worst for my son. I was like, you know what they did to me at 16? They took me to the desert, and they dropped me off with no toilet paper. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, they called it Hell Week. Yeah, look it up. If you didn't know, if your kids get out of hand, you can ship them off to the Aspen Youth Alternatives out there in Moab, Utah. Uh -huh. They take gangsters and they, learn, they make fire. They teach them how to make fire with sticks. I don't know how that makes us better, but you know, we're doing it out there. He goes, what happened? I was like, what do you wipe your butt with? He said, I said, what do you do when you have no leaves? He's like, I don't know. I was like, they give you a journal. You can tear up some paper, you know, and see if you can make a couple journal entries. But after a while, it tears up the culo. <laughs> It'd be all crazy. I said, or you could get origami. You know, go at it and bend up the paper so it's all soft. Then your finger pokes through, and that's a whole other joke. <laughs> I said, you don't know until you don't got toilet paper, boy. Don't look at me like that no more. He starts running his mouth at me, and I said, all right, I can't hit you. I'm going to break you down mentally. I remember when you were retarded. He goes, Dad. It's like, dude, you couldn't do nothing. You couldn't walk, 
couldn't talk. You just pooped on yourself. You drooled all over the place. It was embarrassing. I was trying to introduce you to people. I had to hold up your head, man. You couldn't even hold up your head. I was like, look at my baby. Isn't he special? Look at my special little guy right there. He's getting mad. He's like, this isn't funny. He starts turning red. I was like, oops, somebody about to poop themselves, aren't they? He's like, this is funny. I said, keep messing with me, boy. I'm going to tell everybody. So, son, if you're out there watching, that one was for you, baby. <laughs> they say if you want to make it in this industry right here, you got to get on TV. That is a load of crap. I have been on Cops three times, and I have gone nowhere, man. <laughs> when I was born, my name is Richard Anthony Romero. When I was nine, my mom remarried. She changed my name to Richard William Bryan. She said, if you want to make in this world, you got to want to be white. I was like, dang, mother. You didn't take into account how I was going to look later on in life, did you? I almost looked like the little emblem for Lowrider magazine at this point, okay? We're not fooling anybody here. I was going to change my name back to Romero until I seen who you guys elected the president of the United States. I think I'm going to ride this Brian name out for at least four more years. My name's been Rick Bryan. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Great set. Great set. I, I understand you recently had a, a, a stint somewhere doing something that was super rad where a lot of people saw it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm always at the Denver Improv. Yeah, it's Denver Improv in Northfield Stapleton all the time. Sold out shows, man. You can find me out there doing it all the time. They're calling me, man. And, you know, come out there and host. I'll be featuring headline one time. We're going to keep on. If y'all can come out and support me, that'll happen more often. But yeah, Denver Improv out there in Northfield Stapleton, man. Awesome. Where else can we find you? Where can we, where can we hear your comedy? Rick Bryan Comedy. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can just Rick, look up Rick Bryan Comedy, or I got my own website. Follow me. See what's going on. I'm going to be down to Looney's tomorrow night down in Colorado Springs. So, yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo. Great job, dude. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Thank you.